Here is an example where ATE identification fails even though we do randomize something when we're setting up our research study. So in this particular example, our Y variable is something like income or wage or earnings, and our treatment is a particular job training program uh, that we're hoping will help increase people's earnings. So in this initial diagram, I've drawn six individuals with six different colors and showing both their untreated and treated potential outcomes. So the top here, this shows the red person's untreated and treated potential outcomes and so on. So we can see by construction in this example, the true uh, ATE and actually even more strongly, the true treatment effect for each individual is zero. In other words, yt minus yu equals zero for everyone, uh, which also implies the average treatment effect is also zero. So if we uh, can do things right, we should be estimating an effect of zero. So we'll see if we can have that happen. So imagine we randomly assign people to come to our job training program. So each individual, it's just random whether we assign them to treatment or not. Imagine we assign the first person to treatment, but not the second person. And we assign the next two people, but not the next one, the bottom one. So as you recall, we can only, for each individual, observe either the treated potential outcome or the untreated potential outcome. So in this case, the ones I've circled are the ones that we actually observe in our universe. So if people complied perfectly, so we tell them to go, they go, we tell them not to go, they don't go, then you can see if we average these untreated, or these outcomes in the control group here, and we average the treatment group outcomes, we'll end up in both cases with an average right in the middle, and we would estimate an average treatment effect of zero, which is exactly what we would want. So in that case, it would be fine. But imagine uh, some individuals just have trouble being on time or managing their calendar, or uh, they stay up all night and then they sleep through their alarm in the morning or whatever it is. Um, they have some, you know, issues that cause them to miss our job training program, even though they were assigned to it. In particular, these two bottom ones. Now, why the two bottom ones? It's because these same characteristics that are causing them to miss the training program, well, you could imagine if they had a job, they would also cause them to have a lower wage or lower earnings um, for the exact same reasons. So instead of observing their treated outcomes, we end up observing their untreated outcomes like that. So now if we look at what's remaining in our treatment group, well, it's only these higher earning individuals who remain in the treatment group and in our control group is mostly these lower earning individuals. So if we look at the difference between our actually treated and actually not treated uh, individuals, it looks like there's a big positive effect.
So in other words, using our uh, textbook notation where yb is the outcome for those who are actually treated in our universe, and then ya, those who are actually not. That mean difference is a positive number. So we can see the fact that that's positive, but the true ATE is zero means something went wrong. In other words, the difference in means between YB and YA is not equal to the difference in means between YT and YU, or meaning the ATE is not identified in this case because even though the assignment was random, individuals were allowed to self-select out of the treatment uh, for reasons that were closely related to the outcome variable y.